everyone, this is Monica from Hashtag Goals English, bringing you English lessons to help you improve your English fluency and pronunciation. Today, I'll be reading a short story that I think will be quite fun. It's a humorous, meaning funny or comedic, story by science fiction writer Philip K. Dick. While most of his work is too new to be in the public domain yet, this particular story is in the public domain, which means it's free to use and lucky for us because it's perfect for English learners. This story takes a look at the way writers use figurative language, such as metaphors and idioms. In the following story, the narrator, meaning the person telling the story, is going to share his reactions to reading a book he found. The twist is, as he's reading, he takes these figurative descriptions literally. You'll see what I mean as we start to read. I will be pausing as I read through the story to share the meaning of certain words and phrases, or to repeat them in more simple and easy to understand ways. I won't go over everything, just what is necessary to understand the main idea. Keep in mind, this story is from 1953, and so the author has a more formal writing style that was more typical of that time. There are several different ways you can use this lesson to practice your English. You can use it to grow your vocabulary and knowledge of idioms by taking notes. You can use it to improve your reading and listening skills if you'd prefer to just watch and listen. And you can also practice your speaking skills by shadowing or mimicking me as I read. So let's go. The Eyes Have It by Philip K. Dick. It was quite by accident I discovered this incredible invasion of Earth by life forms from another planet. So he's saying he realized that the earth is being invaded, right? There's an invasion by aliens, life forms, living things from another planet. As yet, I haven't done anything about it. I can't think of anything to do. I wrote to the government and they sent back a pamphlet on the repair and maintenance of frame houses. So this is just some nonsense to be a little bit funny. They sent him a pamphlet, which is kind of like a little small book about how to repair frame houses. It has nothing to do with what he's talking about. Anyhow, the whole thing is known. I'm not the first to discover it. Maybe it's even under control. I was sitting in my easy chair. That would be kind of a comfortable chair, recliner. I was sitting in my easy chair idly turning the pages of a paperback someone had left on the bus when I came across the reference that first put me on the trail. So he's idly turning the pages, not paying attention until he sees something that put him on the trail, so got him interested in this history. For a moment, I didn't respond. I took some time for the full import to sink in, the full importance, the full meaning to go inside, to sink in. After I comprehended, it seemed odd. I hadn't noticed it right away. The reference was clearly to a non-human species of incredible properties, not indigenous to Earth. Right, so some sort of species that isn't a human, is not native, not indigenous to Earth. A species, I hasten to point out, customarily masquerading as ordinary human beings. So he thinks this species of aliens is pretending to be humans. Their disguise, however, became transparent in the face of the following observations by the author. It was at once obvious the author knew everything, knew everything, and was taking it in his stride. So he's found this book. He thinks the author knows all about the aliens and is taking it in his stride, which means it's not a big deal, it's not bothering him, he's just living normally. So notice the following lines, if they're in italics, they are what this narrator is reading from the book he has found. So let's continue. The line, and I tremble remembering it even now, read, his eyes slowly roved about the room. So roved is another word for wander, kind of aimlessly go around. So he reads this line, his eyes slowly roved about the room. And he takes this line literally. 
when we use this this phrasing roved about the room we just mean someone is looking around but he takes this line literally and it scares him because he's thinking of literal eyes out of someone's body going around the room so this is how he reacts vague chills assailed me i tried to picture the eyes did they roll like dimes the passage indicated not so the passage didn't say they seem to move through the air, not over the surface, right? So not on the ground, but in the air. Rather rapidly, apparently, very quickly. No one in the story was surprised. That's what tipped me off, right? That's what gave me a clue or a hint. No sign of amazement at such an outrageous thing. Later, the matter was amplified. So the issue he's seen got bigger or more obvious. There it was in a nutshell. The eyes had clearly come apart from the rest of him and were on their own. My heart pounded and my breath choked in my windpipe. I had stumbled on an accidental mention of a totally unfamiliar race. So here when he says race, he doesn't mean different human races. He means an alien race, a type of alien species. Obviously non-terrestrial, not from Earth. Yet, to the characters in the book, it was perfectly natural. Which suggests they belong to the same species. So now he thinks everyone in the book is also an alien. And the author? A slow suspicion burned in my mind. The author was taking it rather too easily in his stride. Evidently, he felt this was quite a usual thing. Right? The author thinks it's normal. He made absolutely no attempt to conceal, hide this knowledge. The story continued. Presently, his eyes fastened on Julia. Usually we mean fastened as in attached or connected. Julia, being a lady, had at least the breeding to feel indignant, so she was offended. She is described as blushing and knitting her brows angrily. At this, I sighed with relief. They weren't all non-terrestrials. The narrative continues. So he doesn't think Julia is an alien, and he says the story goes on. Slowly, calmly, his eyes examined every inch of her. Great Scott! But here the girl turned and stomped off and the matter ended. I lay back on my chair gasping with horror. <gasps> gasping. My wife and family regarded me in wonder. So his wife and his family looked at him and wondered what was wrong. What's wrong, dear? My wife asked. I couldn't tell her. Knowledge like this was too much for the ordinary run-of-the-mill person. I had to keep it to myself. Nothing, I gasped. I leapt up, snatched the book, and hurried out of the room. So snatched is like grabbed. I grabbed the book and hurried out of the room. In the garage, I continued reading. There was more. Trembling, I read the next revealing passage. He put his arm around Julia. Presently, she asked him if he would remove his arm. He immediately did so with a smile. So remember, he's taking these figurative phrases literally, so he thinks he literally took his arm off, removed his arm. So this is what he's thinking as this story continues. It's not said what was done with the arm after the fellow had removed it. Fellow would be guy or man. After the fellow had removed it, Maybe it was left standing upright in the corner. Maybe it was thrown away. I don't care. In any case, the full meaning was there, staring me right in the face. Means it was very obvious. Here was a race of creatures capable of removing portions of their anatomy at will, right? Parts of their body, they could remove them, take them off whenever they wanted. Eyes, arms, maybe more without batting an eyelash. This phrase, batting an eyelash, means 
without it bothering them, without getting flustered or upset. My knowledge of biology came in handy at this point. Came in handy, was useful. My knowledge of biology came in handy at this point. Obviously, they were simple beings, unicellular, some sort of primitive, single-celled thing, being no more developed than starfish. Starfish can do the same thing, you know, right? Starfish can lose parts of their body. I read on and came to this incredible revelation, tossed off coolly by the author without the faintest tremor, like coolly, like without worry. So again, he's contrasting how upset he is reading it with how comfortable and calm the author and all of the characters in the story are. Tossed off coolly by the author without the faintest tremor. Outside the movie theater, we split up. Part of us went inside, part over to the cafe for dinner. Right? If we didn't take this literally, it means they're in a group of people and some of the people in the group went one place and some of the people in the group went another. But he thinks they split their actual body. Binary fission, obviously. Splitting in half and forming two entities. Probably each lower half went to the cafe, it being farther, and the upper half to the movies. I read on, hands shaking. I had really stumbled onto something here. Stumbled onto, I mean, he, he found it by accident. My mind reeled as I made out this passage. I'm afraid there's no doubt about it. Poor Bibney has lost his head again. Which was followed by, and Bob says he has utterly no guts. Right, so these are common idioms. Lost his head meant, meant went crazy or did something stupid or did something foolish. And no guts. If you have no guts, it means you're a coward. You're not brave. So he thinks he lost his head. He lost his guts, right? His internal organs, stomach and stuff. Yet Bibney got around as well as the next person. The next person, however, was just as strange. He was soon described as totally lacking in brains. So he didn't have brains. There was no doubt of the thing in the next passage. Julia, whom I had thought to be the one normal person, reveals herself also being an alien life form similar to the rest. Uh oh. So now Julia is an alien too. Quite deliberately, Julia had given her heart to the young man. <laughs> it didn't relate what the final disposition of the organ was, but I didn't really care. It was evident Julia had gone right on living in her usual manner, like all the others in the book, without heart, arms, eyes, brains, viscera, dividing up in two when the occasion demanded, without a qualm. So again, he's, he's blown away. He can't believe that these people can remove body parts, take their heart out, take their eyes out, take their guts out, divide themselves, and they're still okay. <laughs> Thereupon, she gave him her hand. I sickened. The rascal now had her hand as well as her heart. I shudder to think what he's done with them by this time. He took her arm. Not content to wait, he had to start dismantling her on his own, flushing crimson. I slammed the book shut and leapt to my feet, but not in time to escape one last reference to carefree bits of anatomy whose travels had originally thrown me on the track. All right, so he closes the book. He saw one more thing right before he closed the book that was similar to the other things he had seen that made him curious about these people who could remove their body parts or these aliens, as he thinks. Her eyes followed him all the way down the road and across the meadow. I rushed from the garage and back inside the warm house, as if the accursed things were following me. My wife and children were playing Monopoly in the kitchen. I joined them and played with frantic fervor, brow feverish, teeth chattering. So his brow, right, this part of your head was feverish, like sweaty. He felt sick. I had had enough of the thing. I want to hear no more about it. Let them come on. Let them invade Earth. I don't want to get mixed up in it. I have absolutely no stomach for it. So he says he doesn't care if the aliens come. He's not strong enough to fight it. 
So as you can see, this story is kind of has a lot of puns, like there's playing with words, there's a lot of figurative language, like metaphors and idioms, and I didn't have time to go over all of it, but I hope that that was understandable and helpful for you to see all these different metaphors, like give someone your heart, right, it means you fall in love with them. Give them your hand, it could mean to hold your hand, sometimes it also means to get married, right? Gave him her arm, probably they were walking arm in arm together down the street. Um, we use a lot of things with the eyes following or eyes roving around a room. It doesn't mean they're literally coming out of our heads. So I hope you enjoyed this story. I'll leave a link for the full text on Project Gutenberg, which is a great resource for finding all kinds of public domain books and short stories. So again, public domain means it's free to use, free to download, you make lessons out of it, whatever you want to do. If you have any questions or thoughts about the story, please leave a comment below. I'll be happy to respond. If you want more lessons like this one, also let me know that in the comments. As always, be sure to hit the like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified each time I post a lesson. You will not get notified if you don't hit the bell. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep practicing.